welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about those top five reasons that might indicate that your labor is beginning now. Thank you so much for being here. If this is the first time that you have come over to this channel, my name is Kitty. I am a registered nurse. I'm also an international board certified lactation consultant, antenatal educator, hypnobirthing instructor, birth and postpartum doula, as well as mama to three little people. And I love to share information about all things trying to conceive, pregnancy, birth, breastfeeding, formula feeding, newborn care and gentle parenting and things like that. So if this is the first time that you've been here make sure and hit that subscribe button and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Let's dive right into my top indications as to if, if maybe your labour is beginning. Okay, so my tip number one or my reason number one that might be an indication that you are beginning that early labour phase is an instinct or a desire to want to go inwards, to shut out the outside world, to do a bit of nesting, to cosy up your space and to stay away from all of the barrage of questions from the outside world. When is baby due? When are they coming? How overdue are you? Do you think that you might have your baby tonight, tomorrow, the next day? All of the questions can be really irritating, but also it's a really lovely indication for you if you want to just step away from the chaos of everyday life and stay at home, cozy up, get into bed, maybe do a little bit more nesting around your house, making your house cozy and safe for your baby to be arriving into. It's a really lovely indication of that feeling of wanting to go inwards, that labor might be beginning. Oftentimes, this is also associated with a really big release. So whether this is a fear release, whether this is a lot of a lot of crying, just a huge emotional release, whether that maybe there's something that you have been battling, whether it's in your family life, in your relationship, in your welcoming of this baby, because we know that positive or sort of toxic positivity is very real it's not always we're super excited to meet this baby and that's it. Sometimes there is fear there. Sometimes, particularly this isn't your first baby, we have other feelings around how birth might be or how it has been previously, how our ability is going to be as a mother, how our, how our relationship might change and knowing that those feelings are so okay and that it's normal for us to have this wave of big emotion just prior to us going into labor is so okay. Let it come let the tears flow, that big release can actually be a huge indication that labour is beginning, but also a really lovely crux at the point at which labour can then unfold really beautifully. So let it go, shake your hips, do a little bit of fear release and let's let labour roll out. Another much more like physical way that we can tell if labour is beginning is a change in your bowel habits or bowel pattern. So if you normally go to the loo maybe once a day and you're noticing that you're having more frequent, maybe loose bowel movements, this can be your body very much emptying the passageway, clearing the runway prior to birth actually beginning. We believe that this is due to the sort of cocktail of hormones that release that are that is released in our body, and one of them is has a has a really nice softening, loosening impact on not only our joints but our ligaments, creating space within our pelvis for our our baby to be able to navigate that, and that softening effect also relaxes the smooth passages of muscle in our bodies. So that's where we often have the evacuation of bowels. So diarrhea, loose stool can be an indication that labor is beginning sooner rather than later. So my next indication that labor might be beginning is an increase in those Braxton Hicks contractions and or an increase in lower back pain. And both of these tend to go hand in hand, whereby we consider the any, any sort of impact that's happening there, whether it's movement, maybe there's an increase in pressure, to be a change that is positive when it comes to baby moving down and getting one step closer to being out. So as our baby enters the pelvic inlet, that initial portion of our pelvis, I should really have gotten my little plastic pelvis while I was doing that demo, we know that it is, we associate that with an increase in lower back pain, aches, as well as an increase in those Braxton Hicks contractions. So with a Braxton Hicks contraction, the difference between that and sort of an early labour contraction is that with these lovely, so we have sort of longitudinal fibres and then cross-sectional fibres and this lovely 
bag of muscle that is our uterus and it our muscles contract and relax like that with a Braxton Hicks with little to no change being made to our cervix and little to no change made with baby's movements in terms of moving them downwards. However, with these early labour contractions or more intense kind of that, that Braxton Hicks contraction, what happens is they begin at, this, at the top, this lovely fundal layer, and almost as if, if you were icing, you know, the, a cupcake, you squeeze from the top to pipe the icing out, or you're getting the last little bit out of a, a tu tube of toothpaste, and it, you know, we squeeze from the top, we roll it up, and the pressure pushes the toothpaste out. Very similar to what happens in our bodies. So with an increase in what may feel like a Braxton Hicks contraction, so it is a not painful contraction, and an increase in lower back or a dull ache um, or pressure, that can be a fantastic indication that things are happening and things are moving away from a surge or a wave that is unchanging and a surge or a wave that is making changes positively to helping our baby move down and out. Next one kind of goes hand in hand with the previous one, which is baby dropping visibly our bump dropping and becoming lower and feeling an increased pressure in the in the lower pelvic region but also at, down the rectum on the bottom so as we're feeling almost like we have to waddle it's a lovely indication that baby has engaged into the pelvic inlet which is that first level of the pelvis that our baby has to navigate and um, if you've already taken some of my empowered birth courses or my hypnobirthing courses you know we talk a lot about helping baby navigate the pelvis so that we can labor and um, we can labor smarter not harder so this is a huge part of that and understanding our physiology and in knowing that that increased sensation of pressure on our on our rectum on our bottom and that increased pressure as baby drops into the pelvis is a lovely indication that baby is moving one step closer to being born so it can be an indication that your labor may begin sooner rather than later as a little follow-up note to that previous point don't be worrying if you're not experiencing any one of these. In particular, if you're noticing, oh, like I'm like at my due date or my guest date or I'm past my guest date and baby still hasn't engaged or dropped into the pelvis. Very, very normal, particularly if this isn't your first pregnancy, for a baby to remain actually quite high until a couple of those really efficient, effective surges push baby down. So don't be worrying if your baby isn't deeply engaged or dropped into your pelvis yet. Okay, so my next tip or thing to look out for is bloody tinged mucousy discharge, otherwise, otherwise known as your bloody show. And this can only be described as like a gelatinous blob of like blood streaked snot. <laughs> and what it does is it forms this beautiful kind of protein binding membrane that sort of clogs the opening to the cervix. So this lovely gelatinous blob and as we start to notice changes to our cervix as it is starting to soften to ripen to open the blob can no longer stay in place and so falls away so having this release of our mucous membrane of this beautiful gelatinous mucousy blob is a beautiful positive sign that labor may very well be on the way the way that it comes away it can come away in one ginormous big gooky blob or it can come away in little dribs and drabs as you're wiping as you're going to the bathroom as you begin laboring away and for many women they don't notice it at all myself included in fact I've seen a lot of mamas who have had no mucus release at all and sometimes their babies come out with a little blob on their head totally totally normal and in fact your body will continue to make more of it as your pregnancy progresses so if you notice you're releasing some of it early it's not always an indication that your baby is coming but in the same breath it can be because it your body's obviously opening and once it's opened so much it can no longer hold it in place I hope that makes sense so it can continue, continue to recreate it until such time as the cervix is so opened that it no longer holds it in place I hope I'm not confusing you. So last but not least is the release of our waters. We have this lovely, very clever double layered membrane. So our amnion and our chorion, which act as a lovely barrier to the risk of ascending infection, but also to cushion those surges, both for us and for baby. And so the release of these waters, this bag of waters, sometimes can be an indication that labor is beginning. And majority of labors 
will you you know you're you'll go into spontaneous labor within the next 24 hours after your water's releasing however it is not all that common so typically 77 to 90 percent of us will have our labor begin prior to our waters actually going ahead and releasing so for the majority of us if we were to allow ourselves to go ourselves to go into a spontaneous labor with no interventions our bodies tend to release those waters under the increased pressure as baby is coming down generally when we're around eight to 10 centimeters. And that is what is considered normal and that lovely protective effect and you know, is, it remains with us for the duration of that time. However, if your labor, your waters do release, it is something that you would want to check in with your healthcare provider for, just to see how you and how baby are managing with that protective barrier no longer in place. And it is of course an indication that your baby will be here sooner rather than later. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, make sure to uh, message me down below and I'll get back to you or join in on my next Empowered Birth course where we talk about this and so much more in so much more detail. And I do ha now have a fully recorded version that you can access in your own time. So go and check on my website to get the details for that below. I hope you're all having a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.